you'll have the link and you can do it at your at your convenience. All right, so we're going to begin. Um, I my theme for this week, I just went last weekend to Estes Park. It was the first time I had traveled since February and it felt really strange. I was hesitant to get on a plane. I had to go to a wedding in Estes Park and um, I was a little apprehensive about traveling. Maybe some of you have already taken that step. Um, I was a little apprehensive about being at a wedding and um, but just took ov obviously all the necessary precautions. And I can just tell you that being gone in this beautiful place like Estes Park, I experienced such a hit of freedom and joy and aliveness that I have not felt in a long time. And I also being there in nature was very healing and um, going for this beautiful wedding that had the backdrop of the mountains and this lake and watching two people you know, love each other, you know, commit their lives to one another. And I just noticed how I cried so much during the weekend off and on, but it was, they were all tears of joy. Just this, I felt like I could exhale for the first time in a long time. And I know we all have had a lot going on in our world and we're, we're hoping to get back to something that might feel a little bit like it used to. And I think that traveling just that weekend felt a little bit like that for me. So maybe you've experienced that as well. So my heart feels really full coming back from that little getaway. And I, on the return home on the plane, I was noticing and also kind of dreading, I hate to say it, like, oh, going back to the same old, same old. And I thought to myself, how can I maintain this feeling? And then I had this reminder from a yoga training, and you know what I'm going to say, is that I said to myself, Marsha, joy is your innate birthright. Like joy is in here. Joy doesn't just happen when you go to Estes Park. So I took out a piece of paper on the plane and wrote down a list of things that had I know have been blocking my joy, mindsets that I've fallen into, uh, maybe habits like um, focusing too much on the fear of the future and not focusing on what I have right now or numbing out with a bag of cheese, cheese puffs in front of Netflix or that inner conflict or inner critic in my mind that keeps showing up. And then I also wrote a list of what are things that help me get my joy on? What are things that I can focus on more to help me increase my joy levels? Maybe FaceTiming my grandchildren more or taking walks in nature here at home a little bit more. So that's our focus tonight. Um, joy, I put a, a slide up there on the screen before we started tonight if you got on early. And it was a quote by Joseph Campbell that I love. It said, find a place inside where there is joy and the joy will burn out the pain. And so tonight our joy is gonna be our yoga practice. So wherever you are, please take a nice seat if you haven't already and let's dive inside for a few moments of centering. I invite you to close your eyes and just welcome yourself. Realizing that you are in, hopefully, in a place where you feel safe and protected. And you can begin to let down your guard. Just tuning in to the natural flow of your breath. And then in this place of quiet, let's plant a seed. Let's plant two seeds of inquiry. As yogis, we know the importance of getting quiet and asking a question. The answer may arrive later, but at least we ask the question. So just briefly plant the seed. What has been blocking my joy lately? What's been getting in the way of me experiencing my innate sense of joy? Maybe it's one thing, maybe it's several, maybe you're not quite clear, that's okay. We'll keep contemplating throughout class. And then let's plant a second seed. What helps me get my joy on? 
What things make me really happy, I'm feeling free and joyful? Maybe tonight it's that you're doing yoga. And join your hands together in front of the heart center, bowing towards the heart, this place of wisdom that always knows what brings you most joy and always knows what is blocking your joy. We'll work on expanding the heart center this evening. So we ask for goodness and grace to fill our practice. And please lift your head, open your eyes and release your hands. And let's start in a standing position tonight. I'm gonna to put my AirPods in here. Maybe you can hear me to make sure I'm connected. Yep, looks like we're connected. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me now? All right, so we're going to start in a standing position. Hi, Kathleen, welcome. Just seeing if I missed anybody else. Okay, so coming to a standing position, I'm going to grab my glasses so I can see what's happening here. And just place your feet hip width apart. Bring your arms up in a cactus pose or a goal pose, you choose. And imagine there's a shelf or something right here under your arms and you're gonna press down. At the same time, lift and elevate your heart center. Lift your chest from the side view. It looks like a little baby back then. And then start to bring your forearms towards each other. Draw your chin towards your chest. Feel the upper back now, stretching, opening. Again, lifting up, open, press the elbows down, lift the heart up. Really expand across the chest and then fold forward, round and look inward. Pausing here, full cycle of breath. Now stretch your hands towards the ceiling, reach the arms high. And then very slowly, keep your arms straight, start to circle them back and down, just opening the heart region and out through the shoulders. Bring the hands now to your thighs as you come into a bent knee position, moving into standing cow and cat. So inhale, lengthen up through your spine, and then exhale slowly round, chin to chest at the end. And again, inhale forward, looking up, and exhale round and looking inside. Two more times. Holding in cow pose now as you come forward, hold right here. Shift your seat back further and then float your arms up and here you are in chair pose. Sink nice and deep, warming up through the legs. And see if you can draw the arm bones slightly back into the sockets. Pausing here, feel the soles of your feet grounded. Now we're gonna keep our legs bent. As you reach down, you might have blocks here in front of you or the floor. Just keep your legs bent, please, and push your seat back just a little bit further, a little bit further. And now guide your bottom, your seat in this direction. Keep going back as you go up and straighten your legs. So hips go back to go up. Let your head release. Telescope the neck. Relax the shoulders downward towards your ears. Breathe in fully. Release out slowly. Seeking freedom in our bodies this evening. And when we feel freer in our bodies, we always feel better. We feel more joyful. And from here, bend your knees. Bring your hands to your thighs. Press yourself all the way up. Come back to standing. All right, let's repeat that. 
Bring your arms up into cactus pose again. Press the elbows down, lift the chest. Exhale, round, look inside. We're just going to do it one time. Stretch your arms towards the ceiling, reach palms face forward, and then slow circle with your arms, and hands to the thighs, seat goes back. Inhale forward into cow. Slow exhalation, round and tuck into cat. Lifting back up to cow pose, nice lumbar curve here, and then arms float out into chair pose. You can lift your heels this time as an option or keep them grounded, just throwing out a few options as I will continue to do throughout class. So choose what feels right for you on this evening. Heels go down, seat way back as you reach down. Please keep your legs bent for now until you can guide your seat back yet further back to go up as the legs slowly straighten. You might have blocks under your hands here if you need to. Shoulders on purpose slide down towards your ears. You might move your head side to side a little. And now this time, my friends, we're going to step back to downward facing dog. So step on back with your legs. And then let's begin by bringing your feet close together this evening. Arms are strong, pressing down through all parts of your hand. Begin to drop your hips and your heels to the right. Draw your chin towards your chest in that general direction. And really, on purpose, let your hips fall heavier to the right. Feel some length, maybe extra length on the left side of your body, perhaps. Swing hips and heels to the left, please. And let the hips fall heavy to the left. Deep breath. Make your way back center with your hips. We lower your knees to child's pose, diagonal child's pose. Walk your hands off to the right and come onto the tips of your fingers. Hands are shoulder width apart and let your head drop down between your arms. Hips are moving slightly over to the left. Planting that seed of inquiry again here. What is blocking my joy lately? What am I allowing? or who or what circumstance is getting in the way of me feeling a bit more alive or joyful. Again, the answer may not be apparent at this moment, it may come later. Walk across now to the second side over to the left. Hips move slightly to the right. Bow the head. And then you might ask here, what helps me get my joy on? What do I want to do more of or invite more of into my life that brings a sense of joy, lightness? And come back to the center, my friends. Bring your hands down, lifting back up to downward facing dog. Hips high. And now three times, we'll rock to plank pose with breath. So inhale forward to plank, hold the breath for three, two, one. Exhale back up, downward facing dog, hold empty, two, three, four. Four count breath forward, inhale, two, three, four. Hold the breath, two, three, four. Hips back high, big down dog. Hold empty, two, three. One more time, inhale forward, two, three, four. Hold the breath, two, three, four. Exhale, push back, two, three, four. Hold empty, two, three, four. Awesome, walk your hands back to your feet, coming into Uttanasana. Bend your knees, push your seat back, hands to your upper thighs. 
and slowly start to come up like cobra all the way up to standing position. I'm going to move to the center of my mat. You can do the same. And we'll move into breath of joy here. Get some good energy flowing. Quick review. The arms in three positions forward and down, side and down, above the head, and then swing back. So three inhales, and the swing is the exhale. We'll go slow and then a little more rhythmic. We don't have to stay together. So from here, inhale forward. So inhale, 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 exhale out. Breathing. In front of the chest, out to the side, above your head, and down. Bend your knees on the way down. Chest, side, above you, and down. In front of the chest, keep the breath going. Three sniffs in and a blow out. Inhale, 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 and exhale. Two more. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Breathe it out. Last one. Stay down this time, please. Let your arm dangle and shake your head out. Pausing here. Draw up through some tone into your belly as you perfectly push from your pelvis down through your leg bones, sinking your feet deeper into the mat. And now from here, bend your knees deeply. Come up to chair pose. So you're going to bring your arms out in front of you. Folding here. And then interlace the hands behind your back. Shoulders roll and lay your chest right on your legs, on your bent legs, bent knees. Head releases. Just checking in as we continue to open up through the chest and shoulders. Let your head subtly move around here, a little Stevie Wonder. And then release your hands down to the floor. Push your seat back. Start to straighten the legs. Then bring hands to hips. Shoulders lift up and then rise. Come up to standing. Awesome. Walk on up to the front of your mat. Find Tadasan Mountain Pose. And let's just start with the hands together in front of you for a moment. Check the feet straight ahead, hip width apart, and just put a little tiny whisper of a bend in your knees. And guide your upper thighs back slightly. You can feel a little bit of lumbar curve coming in the house. And instead of sucking in the abdominals, move your back ribs back. So inflate your back a little. Shoulders roll back. Lengthen the back of your neck up to the crown of your head. Feel your power. Feel your strength. And then open the arms to cactus pose as we did at the very beginning. Press the elbows down as we lift the chest up. And then round forward. Forearms come together, chin to chest. Inhale, stretch the arms up towards the ceiling. Palms go forward. Exhale, circle the arms down around hands to your thighs. Inhale, lift the cow pose arching the spine. Exhale, round to cat. Inhale, back to cow. Holding here for chair pose. Bring the arms in front of you. And you can keep the heels grounded or lift the heels up if you prefer. Hugging the feet and shins and legs towards each other. You might go a little deeper. You might be perfect right where you are. Heels touch down, reach to the mat, straighten the legs. And then make your way back to downward facing dog. Step on back, both feet. Find a strong, aligned dog. And lift your shoulders slightly forward towards your fingertips. Keeping that, put a tiny bend in your knee, please. We're going to float the right leg up first. So float it on up. You're going to hold it here for a little while. So we need strength in the middle, right? We need some connection through our core. So inflate your back towards the ceiling. Feel connection through your abdomen. 
Keep extending the right leg long like someone's pulling your ankle. There is no bend at all in your right leg, the one that's in the air, all right? Then lower the right leg down, lower your knees to the floor, and swing both feet to the right. Extend your left leg out. Take your left arm up and over. And here you are in a side knee plank. Stretch really long. Maybe lean back a little with your head and open up towards the ceiling. Keep the breath of joy moving in and out. And circle back around with your arm. Come back into neutral position. Hands are slightly in front of your shoulders, coming back up to downward facing dog pose. Deep breath here, the shoulders shrug forward towards your fingertips, really sink each fingertip as well. And now lift the left leg up as you did on the first side, draw up through the core, through the middle, stay in tune with your breath, holding for a little while longer. Float the left leg down, everyone. When it arrives, lower both knees down. Move your feet to the left now, swing them to the left. Extend your right leg long, and then come up to side knee plank on this side. Keep stretching, let your head drift back a little. Breathing and opening up. And circle back around to the mat. This time, bring your knees wide for child's pose. Sit the hips on back, stack the hands under your forehead and take a few moments to rest in your breath there and just feel. Feel how maybe that child's pose is bringing a little extra joy to your evening. Now please lift up, extend your arms once again, and we'll lift up to plank pose now. So adjust your body so you feel your long, strong plank. Take a nice full breath in and lower down to your abdomen slowly. Separate the hands for funky cobra, a little wider, a little more forward of your shoulders, strong legs, tug them in, and then four count rise. Inhale, two, three, four, hold the breath, two, three, four, lower slowly, two, three, four, and hold empty. Inhale up, two, three, four, savor the breath, two, three, four, grow longer as you move down, two, three, four, and hold empty, two, three, or place the hands by your chest, everyone. Curl your toes under, push up and back, downward facing dog. Should be feeling like you're getting warmer now. And let's step the right leg up between your hands. So right leg comes up, lower the back knee down, and then lift your torso upright. Right here, back your pelvis up. So you're gonna back up a little bit here. And then focus on your left knee, the knee that's on the floor. Push it down like you're making an indentation in your mat and try to isometrically draw the back knee forward. Perhaps you feel some sensation go up the front of your left thigh into your hip flexor. So keep to that position, stretch your left arm only up. The back knee needs to have some commitment there, down and forward, keep that action. And lean a little bit to your right now. Just a little bit will do it. So this top arm, your left arm is going to be a lasso coming down across your face and then all the way to the mat. Please step back to a downward facing dog. Pausing here for two full breaths. And now please step your left leg up between your hands, everyone. 
lower your back knee down, come upright. Back the pelvis up again. And now push the right knee down like you're snagging your mat and trying to drag your mat forward. Keeping that, stretch your right arm up. Ooh, I can feel my thigh on this side way more than the other side. Maybe you have that going on. Lean to your left a little. We're getting deep into the hip flexor here, which is tight on most human beings. Start to lasso the arm down in front of your face to the mat and lift the back leg up. Step back, downward facing dog once again. And then from here, walk your hands on back to your feet. Hands park on your hips. Slide the shoulder blades on your back and come up to standing again. Uh, come to some balance here. So step, we're coming to the center of the mat and we'll be balancing first on the left leg. So what I'd like for you to do here is bend both knees just a little and then shift your weight onto your left foot, please. From there, just bring the hands on your hips for a moment and lift the right leg up to the side. Right leg to the side, you got it. Good. And now from here, start to take the right leg behind you, crisscross your body, place the ball of the foot on the ground, and then bring your hands together now. Bend both knees, open the elbows, and firmly push your hands together. Then take your ribs back, draw your chin down towards your chest and feel more of a openness across the back, your upper back. And now from here, lift your head, bring the arms to cactus. We're gonna balance on the front foot there, so lift the right leg up, Hold it to the side. You may want to hold a wall. You may want to stay right here, or you could explore tilting to your right so the right elbow gets closer to the right knee. See what happens there. And then come back center. Good job, and release down. Between sides, I invite you to slide your fingers together behind you. Check your feet straight ahead. Shoulders roll back, lift up through the chest. Imagine there's a fountain of joy right here. Give it permission to just open and bubble up and then bend your knees deeply. Bend your knees as you lay your chest once again on your thigh. Drop the head, let it release and stretch the knuckles up. You certainly can use a belt here in your hands if that feels better for your shoulders. I'm going to release your hands down towards the floor, nice and slow. Start to lift your chest coming into chair pose, and then here you are, nice and deep. Heels can lift if you choose, or keep them grounded. And then stretch up slowly, balancing on the balls of the feet if that's an option. You're doing great. And then heels come down and hands to your hips, my friend. We're going to switch over now to the right side. So put a little bend in both knees and then just lift the left leg off to the side. See what's shaking on this side. Hold what I'm shaking going on. It's an elvis moment. All right, so now from here, we're going to take the journey behind. So your left leg goes back behind, crisscross at your knees. You're on the ball of the back foot. I want to point that out. Bend both legs. Hands come together. Open the elbows and then firmly press together. So you should feel your pec muscles, your chest muscles come online here if you're really pressing. Then round your back like cat, chin towards chest. And now lifting up tall through your spine, open to cactus. Shift the weight to the front foot, please, and lift your leg off to the side here. So again, hold a wall or stay here or explore leaning to your left a little. Oh. Good, and let's make our way back to center wherever you are and release. Arms come down to your side. 
Great, take a wide stance here. We're gonna do a little sequence, like a pendulum where we go side to side. Oh no, I'm gonna do the half moon thing first. So if you have a block, I would put one block on either side of your mat. Can you see my bright orange blocks here? They're like, they're like construction cones. You can't miss them. So if you have blocks, put them on either side. We're going, there'll be a half moon coming around the corner here. So if I need those, have them ready. But first of all, don't go as wide as you normally would. Come in just a little shorter. We're gonna do a lean and spring, a lean and spring. We're gonna, like Michael Jordan, we're gonna catch some air time. So turn your left foot outward. Your right foot is still facing me, facing the screen. Shift your weight over onto bending your right leg and come onto the heel so your toes are pointing up over here. And then just feel the opening and the sensation in the inner thigh, that hamstring region. Wherever you need it, you'll feel it. Good. And then as you hold there for a moment longer, watch what I'm going to do and invite you to do. I'm going to spring out and come back. So it's just going to be like this. I'm going to go, ha, huh, and come back down. All right, try that with me. Here we go. You can do a sound effect. Whoa, and come back down. Keep going. Whoa, it's like you're leaning towards a half moon, but you're flying. Ha, huh, you might fall over. That's okay. Woohoo! and back down. All right, let's switch sides. I can see, I can see through the airways that you're doing fantastic. So left foot forward, right foot turns out, shift your hips over to the left and bend the left knee. On the heel, so you can even flare your toes here, pinky toes especially, and open through your right inner thigh. Now you know what's going to come up. I'll give us a countdown on three we'll start springing and a one and a two here we go on three go for it ah oh, it could be a little one it can all stay little or it can get bigger each time so you're putting your foot down and leaning over Whew, about fell over that time lean over all right and come back center so the next time we're going to lean all the way over take your hand to the block and then I'll give you some, some things to play with there. So turn your left foot out, please. We're gonna do one um, bending here, one old good stretch here, and then on three, we're gonna push into a half moon. So one, and a two, and a three. Come up, lean over, oops, I lost it there. Come over and bring your hand to your block or the floor. Extend your back leg long, Reach your arm on up. Now, if you want a little extra bonus here or exploration, engage your abdomen more, lift away from the block and see if you can bring your hand off the block. Powerfully reach up with your top arm. See if the block isn't even needed. Ooh, and then come back down when you're ready. Good job, let's do the second side. So turn right foot out, left foot forward, lean back. Do the lean and spring. Here we go. Go for it. Reach forward, reach out over, grab your block, or maybe there's a chair there. And please check your right foot, everyone. Make sure it's not turned inward. It has a tendency to want to do that on us. And then if you want to, you can explore. Can I take my weight off of that block a little bit? Maybe you go to your fingertips. Maybe you lift it off for a little bit. See what feels right, where you can push your edge just a little bit. And then take your time coming on up and back to center. All right, feet straight ahead. Bring the hands to the heart for a moment and close your eyes if you're comfortable there and just start to feel your heartbeat, feel your breath, feel your body hopefully having sensations that you're even more alive as you create space in your mind, in your body more space for joy in your life. Extend your arms up as you open your eyes and then open the arms out nice and slow, halfway down. Pause right here. Just hold in this expansive position, lift your chest and then exhale, release your hands down to the mat or a block if that feels right. Let your head continue to release down towards the mat.
Open your mouth really wide and then let it softly close three times. Release your jaw. So we're going to transition. So lift your chest a little. Turn to your right until you come into a deep lunge position. So pivot to your right, turn your feet, and you'll find yourself in deep lunge. And now here you have options. You could do everything I'm going to give you with the back knee down. It might feel a little more stable, so see what feels right. Or you can keep the back knee up for crescent. So you choose Yogi's Choice there and come upright if you are wherever you're at. Just bring your spine upright. Now, you know the rest here. Hug your feet and shins towards each other for more strength and stability. And then open your arms to cactus pose. Press the elbows down, lift the heart up. We've done this several times now. Slowly take the forearms forward as you round the upper back. Please stretch the arms straight up above your head. And then that slow circle, arms circle back and down, and then start to come down with your arms to touch the ground. Good, switch now to the front. We're gonna pause in the middle here, open up just a little bit more. So reach out with your hands and hold your ankles to the lowest part of your shin bone. And then squeeze your legs with the strength of your arms, pull your feet and shins inward. Keep that strong, Stability there, that strong, stabling, stabilizing your shins. And then widen your upper inner thighs apart just by using those inner thigh muscles that are broadened the inner thighs. So you're stabilizing your shins in while you're opening your thighs out. Make your head get longer, your neck get longer. I wonder what a long head would look like. <laughs> Alrighty, and then let up on your hands. Start to pivot to your left now. Turn into a deep lunge. And then again, if you did the knee down on the first side, go there. And if you did the knee up, come on up. Take a moment to get your balance. And then bring your arms up into cactus pose. Elbows press down, heart lift. Fold in, round the upper back. Inhale, stretch the arms up. And exhale, circle around. All the way down to the mat. Let's move back to down dog from here. So step your left leg back into down dog. And then lower both knees down to child's pose. Sitting the hips on back and stack the hands under your forehead. Let your body get heavy and just be received by the earth and it hold the entire weight of your body. From here, coming to an all fours position, we did this earlier, but we'll add a variation this time. So you'll be able to do this knee plank like we did before, or you can lift your back leg to more of a knee half moon. So let's swing both legs to the left. Really push the floor away, strong, straight arm. Extend your right leg back. Your left foot, I like to turn it mine even more to the left here. And then open on up as you did before. So option one, right here. Option two might be bring the arm up, bring the leg up a little bit more like a half moon. Good. And then circle the arm down, bring the knee in, find yourself right back in the center. Second side, swing the legs to the right. Left leg will all start here in a knee plank. And the options are stay here. This is really lovely. Or explore lifting the back leg 
Just give me arm. Use your breath flowing, everyone. And now just pull the arm down, bring the legs in, and back to center. We're going to come down onto our stomach now, onto our forearms actually. So once you're on the forearms, <clears throat> curl your toes under. I'm making sure you can still see me here. I can't see very well. Bring your toes curled under. We're going to keep our knees down. Knees down. And then bow your head a little bit. So when you do that, you should feel your ribs move back into your body, your abdominals more connected. Now lift your pelvis and your thighs, but please keep the knees down. Try to drag the elbows isometrically backwards. So they're not really moving, but they're attempt to drag back and try to drag your knees forward. So elbows and knees are pulling towards each other like magnets. Feel the joy in your abdomen now. Full joy. Good. And now we're going to release. Bring your pelvis back down. Oh, yeah. Roll onto your left side everyone left side and then fold your right leg back reach back and pull the foot and draw the heel close to your bottom the knee here we're going to make sure it's not forward and it's not sticking up see if you can keep it adjacent to the bottom knee now for some of us this is plenty you might stay right here and you should be feeling some kind of sensation in your quad for others, you might want a little bit more exploration, and so you can come towards your belly. Just see how it feels. If it's too much, go backwards. Some of you are being honest. Yeah. Go back to where you can have some sense of joy and you can breathe. Good. And now from here, we're going to a mountain climber. So release your foot. Everyone roll to your tummy if you're not already there. And then bring your right knee up so you have a nice 90 degree angle here. Come down onto your belly, stack the hands underneath your forehead, and just rest your hands on the forehead. Slow, generous breath. Try to slow your exhalation down a little bit more. start to lift your head, come back onto your elbows, and bring your right leg down. Let's repeat from the elbow plank, curl your toes under, press the knees firmly down, lift your thighs and pelvis, and let the head slightly bow. Draw the knees forward as you draw the elbows back simultaneously, feeling an activation through your abdomen, holding and now release your pelvis down and invite you to roll to your right side I'm just going to turn over here so I can see you roll onto your right side stack your hips and legs and fold your left leg back and then draw the heel towards your bottom try to lift up through your spine here so you're not sagging down in your shoulder. Really push the right forearm into the ground. So some of us want to stay right here. Perfect. You could explore rolling to your tummies if you want. Oy. Do your best to keep the belly from sagging down towards the floor. Draw the ribs back. Are you feeling something, my friends? I hope so. I'm so glad you showed up tonight. It makes it all more joyful when we practice together. From here, you're going to release your leg. If you're not on your tummy, roll to your tummy and bring the left leg to mountain climber. It's really good to open the inner rim of the hip. And then stack your hands, belly down. Put the forehead on the stacked hands. 
And just let yourself get heavy, let yourself be tired. Lifting on up. Bring your hand, or bring your leg down first. Bring your hands beside your chest. We're gonna to go to a downward facing dog. Hips go high. And moving into a pigeon. So if a pigeon does not feel good for your knee, at this time lie on your back and cross your left ankle over your right thigh for eye of the needle. So if you're going to pigeon, lift your left leg up to the ceiling, flex your foot. And then weave it forward so that the knee comes over towards the left side of your mat, the left wrist, back toes curled under, and wiggle the right knee back. Coming forward, down to the elbows, and then take a moment here to go into cat pose. Round the upper back, round the middle back. facing dog please or if you're laying on your back doing the hip opener there just switch legs cross your right ankle over now lift the right leg if you're in down dog flex the foot and take it forward to pigeon on this side see if it's just as joyful if it's just as much fun on the second side Ooh, this side speaking a little louder walk to your elbows and round your back Drop into your breath, <clears throat> perhaps in this more calming position, and you may check back in on this piece of contemplation. What is blocking my joy? And what helps me get my joy on? We can all do a little adjustment if we need to. Joy lives inside of us always. It just gets blocked. Lifting your chest up, lifting your torso. Make your way back to downward facing dog. And then walk your hands back slowly to your feet. Anchor your heels. Bend your knees a little. Push your feet back further behind your heels. <clears throat> Hands to your hips. Lift the shoulders and slowly rise them all the way up. All right, standing. Now in a balancing bakasana, or same thing we did a little bit ago on our side or stomach. If you need to hold a wall, do so. You're going to stand on your right leg and bring your left leg up. And then you can take the right arm up if you're working more for the balance. Hand on the wall if you're focusing more on the opening through the thigh. So this is where we're starting. We're gonna change the arm position. Bring the arms to cactus pose as we let go of the foot. So you're keeping your back leg bent. Now bend your standing leg as you bring your hands together in front of the heart. Going into flamingo, so the right leg, the standing leg is bending deeper as you lean forward. Bending deeper as you lean forward. And your left heel feels like it's pressing up to kick yourself in the bottom. <laughs> and then slowly stand up, bring the knee in front of you, lengthen up through your spine. And place the left foot on the ground. Fantastic, let's do the second side. We're gonna start with a standing quad stretch. I'll turn around this way. Bring your right leg up behind you. Left hand can hold something or reach up. 
extending the right knee downward as if it were going to press into the mat. Keep your back foot, your right foot flexed as you let go of it and bring the hands to cactus pose for a moment. Start to bend the front knee and drift the hands together in front of your heart. Both legs are bent as you start to lean from the hip crease, lean forward, looking out. Lying bold. And then lifting up, see about bringing your right leg through, still balancing, working on strength, balance, willpower, determination. And left knee and right. Fantastic release and shake your arms out a little bit here. We're going to come on down to the mat, so please recline, come onto your bottom. Teacher needs a drink, a little thirsty, get a little dry mouth from talking all the time. So come on down here. And what fun are we going to have here? Oh, yes. All right, so sit up nice and tall, right on your sits bones, and hold your shins for a moment. Lengthen up through your spine. And then start to lean back with your torso. So you're just leaning back a little bit. Engage or activate your abdomen. And then start to lift your feet a little bit off the floor. So for some of us, this is a good place. So okay on your back. Okay, if it doesn't, bring your toes down. If you want to explore a little bit more, you can bring the legs higher. Hold on to the back of them. Or you can straighten. So just choose what's feeling good for you tonight. You can take your arms out if you feel like you're going to just want to try no arms. And then everyone bend the knees, separate them to the outer edges of your mat. Sit up tall, so I like to hold my ankles and pull up on my legs and let that help you lift up tall, tall through your spine. Now let's cross your left leg under you. So if I were facing you, just left leg crosses under and right leg stays right here. Okay, so you're going to twist to your right and bring your left hand on the outside, right hand on the floor. Keep the tall spine and then start, start to turn your rib cage, your belly, your rib cage, your chest to the right. Slow, easy breath. And coming back to the center, <clears throat> the leg that's bent, you're going to open it to the right and stretch it out straight. And then if you feel in your low back, if you feel rounded and tucked under, you can push down through your hands and do your best to lift up higher. You can even slide a little edge of the blanket underneath your bottom so that your low back is not compromised. Okay, so no rounded back here. You might have to go higher. Okay. And then just turn your chest out to face the straight leg. And for many of us, especially if your back is tending to round, don't round over. Keep more length up through your chest. <clears throat> so if everyone thinks heart towards toes, toes pull back towards heart, and you can explore walking the hands forward, or maybe you stay right here. I'm feeling a lot in my hamstring right here. So you want to reach out through your chest instead of rounding over. And then keep your back happy. <clears throat> and then lifting back up and bring your legs, feet back wide again. So they're out on the outer edges of your mat like so. Fold your ankles and pull yourself up. See how my arms are on the inside of my leg? I'm lifting up through the chest. My hands feel like they're pulling up the leg. So now we're going to cross the left leg. Wait, the right leg under. I <laughs> did that on the other side. Right leg under. Left foot is just right out here in front. You're going to twist to your left. So hold the front leg with your right hand and turn to your left. Slow, easy breath. Now 
down with your leg back to center. I'm going to open your left leg off to the side. Again, you might have to lean forward, slide your bottom back, or use your arms to help lift you. We'll sit on the edge of a blanket. Turn your torso out over your left knee in that direction. And then just place the hands or maybe your up leg here. So you're just really straightening this leg and leaning forward with your heart a little bit. Starting to wind down here now. See the big J, the big J and the big S, the big joyful Shavasana. We rise and release. We'll transition onto our back here. So just go ahead and roll on down to your back. Delight in the floor. Ah, oh, very good. Bend your knees, place your feet on the ground about hip width apart. Take a moment just to feel stillness with the exception of the movement of your breath. <clears throat> Bend both knees into your chest, lifting your feet off the floor. Take your arms out in a T position and roll the legs to the right in a twist. Start to turn the torso, belly, ribs, chest, and head to the left. Feel the heart area wide open and expansive with the arms extended. So just to just give an invitation to the universe, like, bring me some more joy. I'm open to that. Help me access the joy that lives within me that I forget about. Put some tone in your abdomen to support your back, and then lift your legs up and over, everyone, to a second side. Legs to the left. Turn and look to the right. Delight in your breath here. Slow the breath down. as you lift your legs now back to center and let your feet rest upon the floor. Hide your arms down so that they're lying beside you, palms face down, and your knees are bent, feet hip width apart. Puff up your chest a little bit so your shoulder blades come under to lift you. And then we're going to do a couple rolling bridges here. So Feel a lumbar curve in your low back. There's a little space there. We're going to start to take that out as we tilt the pelvis and press the low back to the floor. And then start to peel the low back up off the floor first, then the middle back. Keep it transitioning up the spine to the upper back lift. We are in a nice Setsu Banda or bridge pose. Legs are drawing inward. Take a deep breath in. Start from your upper back now as you roll down back to the mat. Upper back, middle back, not in a hurry. Try to go slow, like a strand of pearls. Your spine goes one at a time. And then your low back and pelvis come down. And then arch your low back. Create a lumbar curve. Let's do that one more time. Take the lumbar curve out. Press the low back down and start to peel the low back up. Middle back, upper back, legs are hugging inward. Deep breath in. Start from the top of the spine. Upper back comes down. Middle back, low back, pelvis, 
and then arch the low back. Find a nice curve, a nice lumbar space. And then cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Here comes my furry friend, Jack. He knows when Shavasana time is, don't you, buddy? He's the king of Shavasana. You can go lay down right here and either do Shavasana or start to clean himself. I apologize ahead of time. Bring your legs in toward you and hold underneath your the back of your right thigh. And then just give a little rock side to side. We're starting to wind down here. Please release and let something just change. Bring your right ankle over your left leg. Draw the knees toward you. Hips should feel a little better now with all the opening we did during class. Remember, you're going to receive this recording, so do it again tomorrow. Do it this weekend a couple times. You will have happy, happy, happy hips and back. Right, Jack? <laughs> and then release. So now we're going to slide into Shavasana for a few moments. Let your legs go straight. I'll keep an eye on the time and hold space. Jack will help me. And you, my furry, my friend, just close your little eyes and drop in. Giving yourself some time to really absorb. You might be able to hear my cat purring right now. That song makes me relax. your body sink into your mat. your jaw and slightly parting your lips and teeth. And just feel the eyes gaze back into the socket. Shavasana.
as you rest for just a little bit longer in Shavasana. I share with you an ancient wisdom teaching from the first Yoga Sutra. Sutra means thread of wisdom. And the yogis say, united in the heart, consciousness is steadied, the mind is steadied. Then we abide in our true nature, which is joy. United in the heart, consciousness is steadied. Then we abide in our true nature, which is joy. Joy isn't just in a destination, a place that you travel to. It's inside of you every day, in your familiar surroundings, and it's all around you. If we just open our eyes to find it. Starting to awaken now with a deeper breath. And starting to move your fingers and toes. And drawing your knees in towards your chest as you're ready. Rolling off to your right side. Slow transition up to your seat where you started. Once you arrive in your seat, sit well and join the hands together in front of your heart center. Let the head bow. I'm going to leave you with these words of wisdom from Jenny Lee, who is the author of a book that I love called True Yoga. And this is what she said. To be truly happy is to be successful at life. And like anything worth accomplishing, these practices require dedication. We must choose a peaceful response in times of conflict. We must choose a grateful thought when we feel negative and down. We must choose to tell the truth even when it's not convenient. These are not always easy choices, but if we're ready to claim true happiness and security that can sustain us through all the ups and downs of life, then these choices become a small price for the serenity, the joy, and the wisdom they bring. Life can become a playground of profound freedom and joy and love. Bowing to your heart where joy, joy resides, may you continue to reflect on what's blocking your joy and what helps you get your joy on, what sparks joy in you. bow to that fountain of joy inside of each of you. I'm so grateful that you chose to practice with me tonight with blessings and lots and lots of love. Namaste. Thanks everyone. I hope you have an awesome weekend. And please remember to look for an email with a link in it if you want to do this class again. You have access to it for five days. And I think that's it. Mark your calendar for November 15th if you're interested in the in-person class and be on the lookout for um, an email about that. And uh, just thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And have a fantastic weekend. And um, I hope that if you have any questions, I'm always watching the chat box at the end, or you certainly can email me and I am always available.
I work out of my house now. I'm always around. <laughs> Someday we'll be back together. Hang in there. We have to stick together, right? Keep our community strong. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie B. Oh, thanks, Chelsea. I'm glad you're back. Thanks, Zach. Hi, thanks, Cindy. Oh, yes, Jack. Did you see at the end, Jack was laying on my stomach. <laughs> he was really liking that Shavasana. <laughs> I love it when he does that, though. Usually when I'm feeling stressed, he'll just lay right on my chest and stomach, and it's so grounding. And you could hear him purring. I know. <laughs> He's got a big, got a loud purr. He's happy. Happy Jack, we call him. 